Today, I want to chat with you guys about the importance of the repair work and why it's important for your <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Justin with Paveman Coatings and I want to chat with you today about the importance of concrete repair and creating a solid foundation for your coating system. One of the bigger aspects to the concrete preparation side is the repair side um, and this is something that doesn't necessarily always get overlooked. It's just hard to kind of show and explain. Um, and the simplest terms, it, it, it's basically the foundation. We have to take care of the foundation of your floor and really make sure that everything is structurally sound um, before we put anything over the top. Because what you're seeing at the end result is the pretty stuff, it's the easy stuff. The, the, the YouTube videos, all, everything that you typically see in a lot of advertisement is, you know, people laying down the coating, people um, broadcasting the flakes, doing all the cool stuff, the fun stuff. That, I would have to say, is only probably about 25% of the actual scope of the project when we start looking at it. Um, so as far as the repair side, there is a lot that goes into it. The preparation work, the pre-planning of the projects, um, looking at the condition of the concrete. All of this is stuff that we really have to take into account and try to educate you as a customer on what you need to be looking for, as well as some of the things that we need to specifically look at when we're doing these floors. So let's say for instance, um, your floor has shifted and moved and we have a few cracks. Well, there's a few things that we need to determine and look at uh, before we even talk about repairing those cracks is how are those cracks formed? What's happened to them? What has changed in the environment? Uh, is it something outside of the home? Has a gutter fallen off of the house and now we have water draining underneath that slab causing a hollow and dead space that has caused the concrete to shift? Is it, uh, built on clay where we have moisture coming in, water coming in and nowhere for it to drain. So it stays underneath the slab. Let's say it's in the winter time, you don't have a heated garage. It freezes, it's gonna lift up and move that slab. So these are all things that we need to determine whether we need to stabilize that slab, um, whether it's a certain product or material that we put into these joints, whether we can weld them together, uh, which is a preferred method is when we repair these, we're welding those pieces of concrete back together, or we look at putting something in that's gonna be a little bit more um, flexible and still allow that slab to move. So there's a, there's a few things that go into it um, before we determine it. You know, really what we need to do um, on the repair side before we get to the pretty coating stuff. So, all right, let's, let's chat about the, um, Let's say pitting. Uh, pitting is, we live in Minnesota. We live in the Midwest. We have a lot of salt. We have a lot of damage, a lot of chemicals coming into the floor. Um, not only that is some of the materials that they're using in within the concrete actually soak up moisture and cause uh, popping, pitting, or cracking. So we have two things that we're actually working with there. So the first thing that we need to do is determine, okay, what's actually causing? Is this a stone within the cement that's causing um, some popping of what we call pop-outs, or is it just um, the surface that's being worn away either by chemicals or just, you know, regular wear? There's a few other things as well as um, when the concrete was placed, that could also affect how the cap of this concrete is, you know, if we have pieces that are flaking off. What we need to do is go in there, inspect everything, uh, do a couple of tests on the floor to see if that cap is structurally sound, see, okay, how long has this floor been down? We dig into the history. If you don't know the history, that's fine. We understand, but the more we know about what's going on, the better that we can determine how we repair it and go forward with it. And a lot of that with the, the pitting side of it um, comes down to the prep and the equipment that we're gonna be using. So in a lot of times when we get into a pitted floor or a floor where the cap is starting to come off, 
we can't just go in there and just do a regular diamond grind. So whether it's us or whatever company you're working with, they should own, <laughs> I should say should, they have to own a shot blaster or know what a shot blaster is if they're renting one to properly prep the floor. Because diamond grinding, for example, is only going to get the top, the top of that surface. Whereas shot blasting is actually going to be able to get down in and not only prep some of those pits and those low areas, but it'll also open up if we do have any weak spots in that concrete. Now there are some minor tests that we can do ahead of time, like a chain drag test or run around um, and actually use a solid object like a hammer to tap on the concrete and find hollow spots or weak spots beforehand. However, it may not always find everything. Um, and for instance, let's say it's a brand new concrete slab and we do see this a lot. Sometimes there's hidden objects that, you know, let's say they poured the concrete in the fall. We have leaves that are coming in. Sometimes that stuff gets trapped in there. Or if somebody comes, you know, onto the slab with muddy boots, sometimes that mud gets trapped in below that surface where a concrete grinding isn't always going to find that stuff, but blasting will because it will find those small weak spots. And, you know, not to knock on any contractors, but every once in a while we do find cigarette butts, wood chips, you know, uh, marbles. I found marbles. It was a hundred year old home. We found all sorts of cool stuff in the concrete. Uh, however, we got to get those foreign objects out of there to make sure that we have a good solid substrate to work from. Mm -hmm.